Every now and again, I boot up a game that I've already beaten. It's not to replay the story or do any missions. It's simply because I want to be in this virtual space. I want to exist in it and move through it, looking, listening, and feeling the environment. A pretty backdrop alone isn't what gets me to jump into these worlds again. Besides, I can satisfy that urge just by watching gameplay clips or video essays. Instead, I want to be present and really feel my interactions with the space I'm in, whether that's just for 20 minutes or a few hours. For me, the deciding factor of what game world I wish to experience again is based on the traversal. Traversal is something I've come to appreciate a lot more over the past few years, and it's what I believe to be one of the most important yet often overlooked aspects of video games. Going from point A to B is an afterthought a lot of the time. Maybe it's just filler or a way of representing the scales of these game worlds. It's very easy to find ourselves so concerned with what happens at our destinations, but never what goes on in between. Traversal can be demanding and exhilarating, but it can also be reflective and calming, and it's the latter that I've noticed plays a part in some of my favourite games ever. But it is worth noting that not all of these games are necessarily built to focus on traversal. I enjoy the quiet interludes between high action sequences and the multiple methods of interactivity with virtual space. Yet I also love demanding and fast-moving traversal. Neither is better than the other. It just depends on what mood I'm in and what kind of experience I want to have. But in this video, I'm focusing on the calming quality of traversal and how it differentiates itself from more action-packed movement. I wanted to explore how a game can keep you in the meditative zone and not allow your mind to creep into boredom, while also reminiscing about some of my favourite examples that highlight the tranquility of traversal. Before getting into what I personally consider to be relaxing games due to their approach to traversal, I want to cover titles that I don't feel fit into this category for me. Parkour games like Mirror's Edge, Ghost Runner, and Dying Light induce more pressure due to combat, time counters, and horror elements. The player is rewarded for getting places as quickly as possible, so as much as you have the choice to take your time, it doesn't necessarily feel like you're being encouraged to. One shot taken in Ghost Runner means you fail, forced back to your last checkpoint. And in Mirror's Edge, if you make a wrong move, you're sent plummeting down the side of a skyscraper. That's not to say games that involve fighting or horror can't be relaxing, but for me there's more of a physical and mentally demanding catharsis to these types of games. It's definitely something that can help me wind down, although I find myself gravitating towards those that require less energy from me. Sometimes I just want my head to be as empty as possible, and not overstimulated, but obviously this preference will vary from person to person. There's also the factor of skill levels which would make gameplay easier, so it is still possible to end up in a calming state of flow even in more typically stress-inducing games. Regardless, the movement in these games is presented to the player in a more suspenseful way thanks to other elements, even though the traversal mechanics could be relaxing on their own. There are many examples of games that have very unique traversal mechanics, and I like to dedicate some time going through those too. Games like Spider-Man translate the famous web swinging into a functional and fluid method of movement. Your character moves through the city streets with satisfying speed, and the noise of passing traffic grows louder as you swing closer to the ground, disappearing as quickly as it came as you are propelled upwards again. It makes travelling between missions fun, and this traversal mechanic cements itself as a major part of the core gameplay. The Gravity Rush games are probably my favourite example when I think of unique traversal. Its manipulation of physics not only gives you a fast, effective method of moving through space, but also a strangely tranquil one. Your character glides and falls in the direction of your choosing, which might look a little silly at first, but it becomes a kind of comical charm. The areas of the world are floating in space, some are situated higher or lower, making use of the traversal mechanic both horizontally and vertically. The colours change as you enter each area, transitioning from rusty amber palettes to more relaxed greens and blues, reminding you that you have entered a different region. But Gravity Rush's movement is not something that I liked that much during combat. Controlling your dives through the air became a bit frustrating for me when in the context of battle, 
I prefer just exploring the world and people watching, taking in the detail of the places around me. Mario Galaxy also has an interesting use of gravity, as you jump between galaxies and planets of all shapes and sizes. I adored the smaller planets, especially the ones near the start of the game that lacked any real danger to your character. Running around trying to catch rabbits as the ethereal, calming soundtrack plays in the background is an experience that I can recall so vividly in my head. It eases you into the gravity mechanics and making your way around a spherical object, and the art direction, music and traversal all comes together perfectly. As much as you'd probably expect me to say walking sims are the epitome of traversal, I'd actually argue that it's not the case. The simplicity of traversal and mechanics in these kinds of games mainly serves to highlight another feature of them, whether that's the story, environment, or something else. Movement is purposefully simplified and buried underneath the more dominant parts of the gameplay experience, which works for these games. It's not too common that you feel the weight of your character and body. Instead, you just kind of drift through space. It's not like in Metal Gear Solid 5, for example, where you sense every footstep through the shuffling of your clothes and sound design as you run through the area you're in. I definitely find walking simulators to be quite soothing for the most part. The shorter experiences sometimes feel like the poetry of video games to me. But despite the name, I think that the majority of walking sims don't actually focus on traversal specifically. I've never really liked this label for its technical inaccuracies and generalization, and pretty much lost all hope in the term when people refer to Death Stranding as a walking simulator. The term neglects to encompass the amazing stories and environments that the games are actually about, and it just seems weird to me that the genre they fall under is named under the least significant aspect of the game. Yes, you often move to objectives and through a virtual space, but the same can be said for almost all video games. Plus, the term walking sim is sometimes used to invalidate a game or imply it's boring, which is painful to witness for many reasons. The variety of games that fall under this category is astounding, and it's probably gaming's worst umbrella term. Some give you goals and a story to follow, whereas others are literally just there for you to play and look around in. I often find myself browsing through itch.io to find lovingly crafted virtual spaces to envelop myself in. There are some really great creations that aren't constricted by generic gameplay expectations, or even stories, and it definitely fulfills my frequent craving for visually pleasing game spaces. I really like the idea of having no objectives. It's the reason why I jump back into games I've already beaten, to fast travel to all the areas I've unlocked easily, and to enjoy the fruits of my past labor, along with that sense of familiarity thanks to already having a lot of playtime. Post-game settings also have a kind of homeliness to them, in my opinion, and that made me think about another aspect of traversal that matters to me, and that's the context. The preference will vary depending on the person, but difficulty is one of the factors that I like to take into consideration when thinking about games that give me a sense of peace. I'm drawn to games that aren't so heavy on combat, or at least make it very easily avoidable. It's not always due to difficulty assigned to combat, but rather the violence of it. If I crave some direction with goals or side quests, I usually gravitate towards games like Death Stranding, whose gameplay tasks involve kindness. It's nice to just be a delivery man bringing people items and resources that are important to them, and helping other players in the asynchronous multiplayer facets of the game. There's a positive community associated with the messages and gameplay the narrative provides, and it's that context that makes me feel so at home when playing Death Stranding. There are even simulators which are all about traversal, with truck driving sims or even skating games among them, and there's a lot of gratification to be found in mastering these mechanics. So while I don't play them personally, I can understand why people would enjoy them. Hardware can also have an impact on the feel of movement, and it's something I really noticed when playing Astro's Playroom, with the DualSense features being showcased brilliantly. Feeling the texture of the ground beneath you is incredibly immersive, playing to your senses through sight, sound, and touch, resulting in a greater connection to your presence in the environment. But even without the physical sensations, games are still able to effectively communicate the feel of movement. Some of my favorite examples are Metal Gear Solid 5, Abzu, and Journey, all of which stood out to me by their ability to convey weight. Whether that's through sound, level of responsiveness to my inputs, or environmental effects like leaving a trail in the sand behind you, 
The movement in these games alone is satisfying, let alone the level design that implements it. Death Stranding and Breath of the Wild are easily my favourite examples of relaxing traversal. Both Sam and Link are able to conquer the obstacles of their environments in different ways, whether that's by foot, horseback, vehicle, zipline or paraglider. With Sam, you have to pay closer attention to the terrain you're walking across, as one wrong move can send you tumbling down a steep hill, damaging your cargo and making BB cry. You're encouraged to get through these places more carefully, and while this might seem a little taxing, it actually became second nature to me very quickly. With Link, the weather conditions also affect his movement, as climbing a slippery cliff will sometimes cause you to lose your grip and slide back down. There are consequences to making wrong choices, but nothing that means you can't get back up again and carry on. I would search for hills just so I could shield surf down them, and jump onto small rafts to sail across the water. And sometimes I would allow myself to be carried away by the flow of a river just so I could put Sam's otter suit to good use. Neither of these choices were the better option of travel for me when actually trying to get somewhere, but both were fun mechanics to engage with. Now, both of these games feature combat, puzzles, and quests, but I find it easy and incredibly tempting to jump back into them just to explore these worlds. The traversal is satisfying and relaxing on its own. They're still varied enough to keep me engaged, and I find myself in this perfect zen state. Death Stranding is also a game that encourages you to rest, which gave me the opportunity to really take in my surroundings. And honestly, it taught me to be a lot more mindful. I learned to take my time, and I carry these lessons with me even now. I appreciate virtual worlds so much more, and I allow myself to truly feel connected. A Short Hike is a game where you make your way to the summit in search of a phone signal, but to do so you'll need to gain golden feathers in order to have the ability to fly higher. Gaining these golden feathers would include tasks like trading coins or seashells, or even finding them around the map. You can go fishing, enter a race, or talk to other animals on the island, and overall it's an incredibly wholesome experience. Traversal becomes easier as you acquire golden feathers and unlock more reachable areas. This form of progression is fairly quick, not allowing the player to become frustrated, but still giving enough content if they want to take their time. A short hike ends with the arrival at the top of the mountain, but my favourite part in the entire game is the fall. All that work you put into reaching the top is made so trivial as you glide downwards, and while there's an incredible sense of achievement in reaching the summit, the relief of falling is the true reward in my opinion. Katamari, although mostly involving timed levels for the main story, is still great to play in the unlimited eternal mode. You still feel rewarded by collecting all the objects you can, resulting in a behemoth of a Katamari that may be bigger than what you're capable of forming in the timed levels depending on your level of skill. The act of cleaning the cluttered environments is also therapeutic, and the thought process of only bumping into objects around the same size as you is a very simple rule to follow, making the game very welcoming even to newcomers, but I will also attribute an equal amount of my enjoyment to the soundtrack. When I think about the time I spent with Final Fantasy XV, I remember the warmth from the company of my friends, and the bonds between these people providing the essence of the game's experience. The whole thing feels like a road trip, which works very well given that friendship is arguably one of the largest themes. Whether it's camping at night, engaging in conversations, seeing photos that Prompto took to end the day, or enjoying a nice meal together, it has a wonderful sense of just hanging out. I'd often set my waypoint for the car and just vibe. I honestly liked the downtime, so I would just let the autopilot drive me to my destination, even for long distances. The map is fairly empty, which actually benefited the road trip aspect, because realistically, that's just what landscapes are like. Apart from driving, the game also allows you to traverse by riding chocobos, which I have a huge soft spot for. I don't think it's too far of a stretch to say that this is the best chocobo riding in any Final Fantasy game. And while I'm not usually someone who pays much attention to animation, it stood out to me as impressively believable, and simply enjoyable to just watch. Overall, my favourite and most memorable examples of relaxing traversal have been those that can take away tension, but not necessarily goals and drive. Although, sometimes, doing nothing is everything. 
the worlds I'm exploring are also a very important factor, along with the soundtrack in some cases, creating a vivid and positive echo in my mind for certain moments, ones that can stick with me for many years to come. I don't want interactions to only be fun, but meaningful too. Games about kindness and helping people are kind of safe space for me, and undoubtedly contributes to how relaxing I find it. I let my guard down as stresses or violence aren't present, or become skillful enough to no longer notice them. It's impossible to mention or even play every game that would be relevant to this discussion, and I'm sure I missed out on some key examples of the tranquility of traversal. So I ask you this, what movement systems in games make you feel calm and why? What are your best memories when it comes to exploring virtual spaces? And finally, how important is traversal to you? Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.